ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the XFL. Does not get better than downtown San Antonio. The fine people of this city love winners in the San Antonio Brahmas trying to deliver one in the final two home games to the fine folks showing up at the Alamo Dome. Their opponent, Quentin Dormady, local guy, played his high school football just north of San Antonio and Bernie, looking for a bounce back performance for the Guardians who were eliminated from the playoff race last week. Then you got Delante Scott, the picture of focus. He's been the focus of every offense that he's gone up against. They can't find a way to slow down Delante Scott. Here's what's on the line in the north. The D.C. defenders can wrap up home field with a win tomorrow against Arlington. That would help the cause for the San Antonio Brahmas. St. Louis, Seattle fighting for the second spot in the north. In the south, the Houston Roughnecks took down Vegas earlier today. So they have home field advantage, and it's going to be wild in the final two weeks to see who goes opposite of them, Arlington or San Antonio. Brahmas let a huge one slip through their fingers last week inside the dome. Jaquez Patrick in the final few minutes got a touchdown. They got a P.I. on the fourth and 15. John Parker Romo rushes out, nails the field goal. We go to overtime, but in OT, it was only Houston scoring. The Brahmas went 0 for 3 in their OT attempts, and the Roughnecks went 17 to 15. With that, hello and welcome to San Antonio. We're inside the Alamo Dome, a place that will host the XFL Championship in a few weeks. Lowell Galindo here with Sam Ocho. And surprisingly, even though the Brahmas got only two wins, they're alive in this race. If they win the next two and Arlington loses the next two, the Brahmas are going to the playoffs. Well, the playoffs have officially begun for the San Antonio Brahmas. And the reason that they're still in it is because of their defense. This is the number one ranked defense in the XFL. They talk about pursuing excellence, chasing perfection. We'll see if they can do it tonight. Ian Fitzsimmons standing by down on the field with Heinz Ward. Thanks, Lowell. Coach, you are alive for the playoffs right now. Message to the team this week coming into this one. Well, talk is cheap, man. It's time for these guys to show up and play some football for 60 minutes. You know, just stressing that they got to finish, man. We got to finish ball games. We've been close and a lot of games. Uh, we came up short, but today we got to get our first win here in San Antonio, so we got to finish tonight. A couple of guys you're looking to step up. Uh, Jack Cohn, uh, he got his first victory against Orlando early in the season. He's had a phenomenal week. Guys around him, we just got to take care of the football and let him go to work and execute. Thanks, Coach. No problem. Well, well Cohn's counterpart is Quentin Dormady. He starred just north of here, Bernie High School. A lot of friends and family come into this game. Sam, the big question, though, is it going to be the guy that had an XFL best six touchdowns in the upset against D.C. or the XFL worst five turnovers in a loss last week? I'm leaning towards the six touchdowns, Quentin Dormady. Over the last four weeks, this offense has averaged 26 points per game. That's second in the XFL. That's since he's taken the helm. Last week, they struggled. Five turnovers by the quarterback alone. Hopefully, you can reduce those to Tonight. You need a go-to receiver and all season long Dormady and the rest of the Guardians quarterbacks have had one in Cody Lattimore However, the knee's been bothering him a little bit and he's done his work. He gets the week off So you're talking about a no-go for the leading receiver in the league Here's Chris Budden standing by with Terrell Buckley Coach, as you guys move past the focus of postseason What has been the message and the response from your guys at practice this week? Compete we're professionals. We got a job to do. And this energy that's in this building is awesome. They're already booing us when we're coming out. So this is exciting. I appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. Chris, thank you so much. In the XFL, the home team always gets the choice. Do they want the ball or they want a kick? Heinz Ward wants to see his defense. So the Brahmas will take the football to start the second half. Parker Romo to get the festivities started inside the Alamo Dome. Dedrick Thomas is back deep to return for the Orlando Guardians. How will they respond after being eliminated from the playoff race a week ago? Teams cannot leave the 30 and 35 before the ball is caught. Thomas trying to reverse fields. And will be brought down at the 26-yard line. Let's get into the betting line. San Antonio, the favorite by two points. The total is at 38 and a half. Keep this in mind. Seven of eight times in the Brahmas game, the under has hit the most in the XFL. Quentin Dormady, homecoming for him. 
star at Bernie High School. Drawn for a bounce back performance. And in five games played, he has been arguably the second half of the season, the best quarterback in the league. The offense has changed since he's taken the helm. There's a new offensive coordinator as well. Let's see how they respond to last week's struggles. Guardians going on the ground. Drew Beasley making the stop on Devin Darrington. Tank left, tank left. And there is tank Shane right, Matthews. Tank right, tank right, tank right. Tank right Former motion, Florida Gunslinger. Cadillac. Tank right motion, tank right Cadillac. motion. Cadillac. Cadillac, Cadillac on one, Cadillac on one, Cadillac. Matthews did not start the season as the play caller. That was Robert Ford. He's taken over. And over the past four right. games, Orlando scoring 26 points per game, number two in the league. Back-to-back -back carries. Jordan Williams making the stop on Darrington. Sam, we're going to say Jordan Williams' name a lot. He leads the league in tackles. Well, he shores up the middle of that San Antonio Brahma's defense, and his mindset is different than most. We talk about these players making 5000 a week, and his coach said, you trying to get 50000 for the year or 750000 He has the NFL after eight goals. Scallop, angle wide shallow. The Dome making some noise. Third and one for the best third down offense in the league. 180! Dormady coming back to his right, and that is a first down catch. Big boy bringing him with him. Ryan Becker moved the chains. So great play design. It's third and short. You absolutely uh, available to do the run, but you have Ryan Becker stepping up. Shaw Tampa again. Tank left. Jim Herman, defensive coordinator for the Bronx. Corvette bubble. Corvette. 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 Okay. We're going to have to Former put a Broyles blackjack award on winner. This. As the DC with the Michigan Wolverines, the year Charles what Woodson won the Heisman. Another carry for Darrington. His third on the drive has his seam, cutting it back. Some wiggle to the 30 yard line. Devin Darrington, a former Harvard man, finished his college career at Virginia, 17 yards for him. And he had other Power 5 author, off, offers. He chose Harvard because he wanted to get that great education. He was injured to start the season. Now that he's healthy, this offense has changed dramatically. Jermaine well, well, Martin well, is a no-go in this game. So here is Dedrick Thomas. Start. He's at the bottom of your screen. He will play some running back as well. Dormady looking that way to Thomas, and he's hit immediately. Popped on the play by Jamison Houston. Houston just signed this week. Good job, good job. Played with Jordan Williams at Baylor. Crisp opening drive for Orlando, but we've seen this throughout the course of the season. Rip the stay, first drives have not been the problem. Rip stay, rip stay, rip stay. Orlando has consistently done well to start the games, but it's not about starting for them, it's about finishing. Hurry, Get the good hurry. start, finish Sarah, well. Sarah, Sarah. Eli Rogers in motion. Dormady, head fake, went back to it, there's contact, and that is easily going to bring out a P.I. as Charleston Rambo was the intended target. I had that ball catchable because it landed in the field of play back here. So I think we're good on DPI. I got catchable. So. So what's the spot in the end zone or in the four yard line and then number? Just to pass interference defense. You have a number. Two six. Pass interference defense number 26. Ball be placed in the spot of the foul and includes an automatic first down. That's going to go against Jamison Houston. And one thing to note, so Jack Kerner, starting safety, he's out this week. He got injured last week, so there's a little bit of lack of communication on the back end. That's something to watch as this game progresses. Ryan Lewis, another standout DB, also out. Little fade up and into the midst of Jordan Thomas. The Mississippi State Bulldog. Big hands, big catch, put it on the board. Big hands, big catch, big body. Jordan Thomas is 6'7". He's a tight end, but he's really a receiver. He did this in college as well, and so throw it up to him, he consistently makes plays. And the XFL, come here, come here, opportunity come here, come here. to go for a one-point conversion go. from the two-yard line. Two-pointer from out. the five, or a three from the ten. 
Now this could be a challenge situation. You, you, you want a challenge? Yes. You yes. want a challenge for an Let's offensive in pass on Dean Dean or a push off the command center. All right, Dean, did you hear that? Yeah, I've got it. He's challenging that it was offensive pass defense for potential push off. That is correct. Right yep. I'm on my far hand. San Antonio's now. called timeout to challenge There's offensive pass contact. interference the on the previous play. The defenders got contact as well. I'm looking at this shot here. There is some extension. I don't see a ton of separation. 11, That's 11, my 34. far hand. I'm going to go to yeah. Sky Cam, see what that shows no, wait, me. Dean, Dean, hear me. Yep, I'm still looking. Yeah, you're good. You're good, Dean. Near handheld. Yeah, I just see a lot of contact both ways. Yep, I'm going to take one more look at the car. Again, hand fighting. And it will be second. Some extension, don't see enough separation. After review, Jason, not enough to make it a foul. There's some contact on both sides, just don't see a separation. So call okay, will so stand. Okay, so we're, we're going to say the call will stand. The touchdown is good, and that is the ta challenge for San Antonio. Correct, and a timeout. And a timeout. Correct. Correct. After, After review, review, the ruling on the field stands. There is no foul. The result plays a touchdown. San Antonio is charged a timeout and loses their challenge for the game. So each team with one challenge, that's the red chiclet below the timeouts. You need a timeout available to challenge a play, and you can challenge get anything. Let's get set, okay? Here we go. Here we go. Jack right, Jack right, act two hot, kinda X fade. On one, ready? This will be a two-pointer for Orlando. They are 0 for 9 in conversions that are not one-pointers. Dormany going back. Touchdown. Okay. No, try is good. Try is good. That's 6'5, 277 on 5'10, 163. I'm going to go with the former every time, Sam. Well, it's too easy right here for Jordan Thomas. And we saw this two weeks ago in Orlando's win versus DC. Who made Pass the outstanding the catch? Defense. Jordan Thomas. The penalty decline. The try is good. Free kick. So disbelief on the face of Heinz Ward. His defense, the number one scoring defense in the XFL. But Jordan Thomas just said, hey, fella, I'm bigger than you. Deal with it. The XFL is brought to you by Progressive, the right call to protect your home and car. Now, the river barges don't go that fast on the river walk, but if they did, maybe even better experience on what is already an amazing time down on San Antonio's famous river walk. Lord Galindo here with Sam Acho, Ian Fitzsimmons, Chris Budden hanging out. And uh oh, the Orlando Guardians playbook is out. We'll get into the story of that because that relates to that man that just lit them up on the opening drive. So you may be careful how you talk trash against Quentin Dormady in this game. Kick is away. Here's Fred Brown, who has the lone touchdown return in the XFL this season. Still up. And this will take him to the 28-yard line. Bash Jack left. Cohn back at quarterback for Good the second BF straight gone. game. Fact the bash left. Good eight, Bib Gum. Back to bash left. We're going good eight, Bib Gum on Vegas. Ready? Good eight, Bib. That's Jimmy Johnson calling the plays through the headset to Jack Cohn. His first game Vegas, against Orlando, Vegas. the best of his career. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. Brahma's Wait, destroyed the touchdown. Guardians. Jaquez Patrick coming off his best game. 
Let's check in with Chris. Yeah, with Jordan Thomas, who had the touchdown two-point conversion. Back-to-back -back play calls right to you, even after they challenged whether or not there was the push-off. Walk me through that play. Yes, ma'am. They just threw it up and gave me an opportunity. That's all you can ask for. Uh, I've just been blessed, so I can't complain. A little bit of chatter there with the DB. What were you saying? Uh, I wasn't saying anything. <laughs> you know, he was just mad. It's okay. Vegas, so Vegas. I thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Saying that is classic. He was just Why? mad that that's Why okay. It's second down. Cohen on the throw. He's got his man wide open. And that is Nick Hawley, who started the season with the Houston Roughnecks out of Kent State. Yeah, and you look at it, not only with Jack Cohn finding Nick Hawley, but Jack Cohn finding short, easy completions in this offense helps him build rhythm for the downfield passing game. Cohn hey, coming good, off a two-interception performance oh, 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 in the oh, Dome last week in the loss against Houston. Patrick had his best game. Did Patrick seem so much more fresh and explosive to you last week? He did, and it's not only that, but remember, Kalen Balazs got injured a few weeks ago, and now the whole load is on Jacquez Patrick, and so he's Pat understanding his, 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 his hey, ability, and the offense is rolling around it. 96 yards last week. He's the number three Real. rusher in the XFL on the season. Watch Cat, watch Cat. Vegas, Vegas. We're going. Why are you? My son. Holly in motion. Cone, the screen to Patrick. Flag down. Patrick making a tackle in that way. Still going inside the 20. Let's see what the flag is all about. 16. Wolf Link, offense, number 62. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat second down. And that will wipe out a 38-yard run. And if you're an offensive coordinator, you're frustrated because this is a screen. So it's a screen. You don't want to let, let him go by you. Let them run by you. That's Balaam Buchanan. Let him go so that he can get to the quarterback and you have the screen right behind it. And so those are the penalties that have been hurting the San Antonio Brahma's offense. Especially on the offensive line. Week number one, they lose four of their five starters, and it's been upheaval on the line since then, Fitz. Right in front of me, Lowell, and I'll tell you right, it happened right in front of me, Lowell, and if you still had a challenge, that might be one you would challenge and win. You think you you think that that Real. could be one? Vegas, yeah, Vegas. right in front of me. I, I didn't go. see a hold. I saw a clean block. Sam? Well, it's that arm around that you might look at. It looks like a holding. He throws him down. So that's where I would see that holding call be called. Now, Fitz, what's your take on using a challenge this early in a game? Well, you had players behind Heinz Ward telling him, don't challenge, don't challenge, because there was a lot of hand fighting. Offensive and defensive guys, but you know Heinz Ward, he's an old receiver, and that wasn't a chicken wing from Jordan Thomas, tight end for Orlando. That was an extension, but as Dean said, that was hand fighting from both guys. So I get it, but Heinz was, was, he was pretty adamant he was going to challenge it no matter what. I, don't, I didn't have a... I had a problem with that one, and then, Vegas, but Vegas. normally I don't have one this early, but that was a 50-50, and I wouldn't have challenged that one. Cohen on a third and 12. He's a good enough runner, but this is too much distance. Throws across to Hilleman. Sam, what do you do now here in this situation? Well, at this point, I, you want to win, so you might have to punt it. Um, just to keep that field position. If you don't get that off, if you don't get the first down, now all of a sudden you give the offense another chance. Now you're down by two scores. So I understand the decision to punt the ball, rely on your defense, and then try and get this game back into a position where you can score. You like it. You understand it. Two different things. Yeah, so I, I, I don't necessarily love it, but I understand it. Now this is delicate because if the punt goes into the end zone, it's coming out on the 35, and Brad Wing has a huge leg. But that is some good touch. Fair catch called for by Justin Rogers, and that will back up Orlando. Week 9 continues tomorrow afternoon at noon Eastern with an ESPN doubleheader. It starts with the defenders hosting the Renegades, followed by a huge one between the Sea Dragons and Battle Hawks. Every game is also available on ESPN+. If DC wins, they clinch home field in the north. And it keeps San Antonio alive if they win this game. Why not? Why not? The huge one, Seattle St. Louis, if the Battle Hawks no. win, they get that second spot in the north. 180! Dormady has snap. 
He's going to keep it heads up play, but he is dropped. Ben Davis, the former Alabama Crimson Tide and Texas Longhorn, sending him back. And Ben Davis is one of the best. He was one of the best highly touted recruits in high school. When the ball's up in the air, you just go. It doesn't matter what your assignment is. If you see that might be a fumble, go make a play, and it gets the offense in an unfavorable Scott position. Left Chicago. 57th left tackle left for loss. Left left Chicago. David Davis. For the Brahma's defense, they entered the week with eight more than Houston for the top spot Cut. in the league. 180! Quick pass. Swinging it out to Darrington. And Darrington fights to get to the 10. Sean Williams, the former Navy captain, with the tackle. And one of the things about not just Sean Williams, but everyone on this right, defense, you turn on the tape. Give me Rush Miami. Rush Miami. They run to the ball. That's what this defense does. You hear that rush call. That means get your Miami, four Miami. best pass rushers in there, have them get up after the quarterback. But no matter if they're down, they're up. Rush, rush Miami. They rush get Miami. to the football. The numbers through the roof for the San Antonio defense. The problem yeah, he, he, has been the offense, as we're now watching is. Javier Edwards out of Colorado limps off the field. Sam, at 365 pounds, you do not see a lot of dudes play with the motor that Javier Edwards plays but with. But see, that's what makes this defense so special. They have a couple guys in there, Javier Edwards yeah. being one of them, 365. Other guys, uh, uh, yeah, guys like Matthew Gotel, guys are 330. On Turkey, on Turkey. On Turkey. It's yeah, hard to run Camilo Tongamoa. It's hard right. to run yeah. against big Ace guys. Right. But Ace right. Ace right. Ace right. When it comes to that rush, you see the guys like go. Drew Beasley Sarah, on the inside. Sarah. Play Wait, clock, get late. Dormity gets it off. Edge rush. He eludes it, but not long enough. Drew Beasley, the box of knives out of Michigan State with the sack. And, and, and that, that's an inside move. He's a defensive end. He's 6'3", he's 255. He's rushing from a three technique. People don't understand how difficult this is. You're going against offensive guards who are 330 pounds. Don't use your strength. Use your quickness. And that's what you see Drew Beasley do here. Starts on the outside. He goes inside. Gets on the inside shoulder of Abdul Beecham, the offensive guard. And he presses to the quarterback. That was a great move, but he did the same thing last week on the left side of the ball. Matt Brown gets it off. Landon Akers from the 50. No, did he touch it? Is it live or not? It is not. Orlando, though, will spot this at the 35, and that erases what could have been game-changing field position after San Antonio hey, thought they had He's just coming. flipped the field. 8-0. Week number nine in the XFL schedule. One more week to go, and then it is time for the playoffs. South Division Championship, April 29th on ESPN2. The North, April 30th on ESPN. And then we're back here in San Antonio for the XFL Championship, May 13th on ABC. San Antonio, such a great city for huge games, and we're leading off 2-1. Here are the playoff clinching scenarios. Houston has clinched the South. Arlington is in if they beat D.C. Now, if D.C. wins tomorrow, they've got the North Division. St. Louis is in if they beat Seattle. I cannot wait for that game tomorrow. And so much happens with all these games. If Arlington loses tomorrow and San, and San Antonio wins, now Week 10 means everything where Arlington plays Houston. And so Real. all these games the mean so much the right now. For the Brahmas, they have to win their next two. Arlington Davis, Davis. has to lose Go. the next two. Back to Jaquez Patrick out of Florida State. Still up. Refuses to go down. He had the 38 yarder erased by a hold, but he's getting some of them back here. 17 for Patrick. Feed the beast, whether it's through the passing game in a screen or the running game. Jock West Patrick is your main, not even target, but the main person you should be feeding because the offensive line has struggled. So give it to your running back on runs or on screens. Norman Price is down with an injury. Now, Sam, with Heinz Ward, he's got that Steelers DNA. They wanted this to be a ground and pound type offense. Got the big running backs, Patrick and Kalen Balazs to start the year. They simply have not had the offensive line play to play that style. And we see another injury right here. We're hoping that Norman Price is okay. But the tough part about this offense is 
even last week, you look at the quick game and, and, and empty. There were sacks in quick game. There were yeah. six sacks overall, and that's time where the ball has to be out quick. And so whether it's on the quarterback or the offensive line, if you don't have protection, it's hard to get anything started. They've shuffled on the O-line all season long. They've started four different quarterbacks. They've also had the injuries to Balazs with the ruptured Achilles. He's out for the season. And then the offense, the change at offensive coordinator as well. But right now, the focus is on the health of San Antonio offensive linemen. We'll have an update when we return from the Alamo Dome on Norman Price. Just saw Norman Price being carted off the field. Has a towel covering the tears. Obviously an emotional scene here. The 28-year-old out of Southern Miss. An injury this late in the season. At that age, we just, we just don't know. But they're playing for so much. You never know when it's going to be your last snap. But what stood out to me was seeing every player on that team on Vegas. Ready. not only take a knee, but they ran out to greet Norman Price as he was on his way out. It shows you that they care about one another and that he's one of the leaders on Vegas, this team. Vegas. We go. It's a first and 10 for the Brahmas. Landon Landed acres in motion. Cohen, ball is getting out quick, but the Orlando defense even quicker getting to the football. Terrence Plummer, Balin Buchanan on the stop. Three wides, three wides, three wides. And Terrence Plummer, that is the vocal leader of this defense. In his booming voice, he told hey, us we're going before stack the cover start six, of the season, stack cover six, stack cover all six. on me. He's the leader of the defense. He's one of their, their middle linebacker. He's one of the guys Vegas, who helps Vegas. that defense go. When they got their first go. win, he was one of the locker room saying, I don't care what anyone said, we win. Patrick with the carry. Left side, why not carry the rest of the Guardians' defense? Losing helmets, toting the rock. Physical football here late in the season. Sometimes, you talk about struggle, it creates a new identity. We are going to be a team that runs the ball because of our offensive line struggles. And now we're seeing new stars develop in Jacquez Patrick. This is what they wanted to be at the beginning of the season. They made the switch from Jaime Elizondo at OC yeah. to Jimmy Johnson. Under Elizondo, they had seven oh, offensive oh, touchdowns oh, wow. in the first four games, just three in the last four with Johnson. Can't have it. Dion Yelder on third down. We saw that twice from Fred Brown gotcha. a week ago. Game changers. Hyde Ward talked about sharing the blame. Not just the offensive line. We have receivers dropping passes, quarterbacks missing reads. It's not just one position group. If you want to be a winning team, everyone has to take the onus upon themselves to make the plays they're supposed to make. Love this move on fourth and two. Offense is staying out. Brahmas have to get Real. some juice going. This is a must win. Omaha, Omaha, we go. Ride the bell cow. Oh, yeah. Big contact. First down for Jaquez Patrick. And it's not just his size, it's his experience. Remember, at Florida State, he was backing up Dalvin Cook. He learned from one of the best. Then he got his time in the NFL and at Florida State. He's a big physical running back that knows how to put his shoulder down. And they've learned from a few weeks back early in the season, third and short, fourth and short. They tried to pass it, didn't work. Now you get it to your bell cow. And he was supposed Vegas, to be Vegas. the star at Florida We're State, go. not Dalvin Cook. He's the number three ranked running back prospect out of high school. Here's Jonathan Hilleman, good in his own right, upended by Buchanan. Balin Buchanan, the son of Ray. He was an NFL standout, 47 Nickel. interceptions Nickel. in his NFL career. Bloodlines Stack strong. Carry. Stack Tampa carry. Stack Tampa carry. Tony Carter, defensive Stitch coordinator back for the Guardians, four-time All-ACC pick at Florida State, and a solid career in the NFL. Vegas, Vegas. Last time that Twix call was a screen. Whitey! Cohen dumped it down to Hilleman. And Hilleman is dumped by Gerald Willis. Willis set of Miami. One of the standouts of this go, Guardians go. deep. Is the ball getting out quicker for Cohen? It is. It's getting let's out go, quicker, but a lot of it's because of the screen game, and then a lot of we've seen is run game. So short pass, screen game, run game. You know who you are. No downfield 74, passing yet. 74 in Vegas, ready. Hurry up. Vegas, Vegas. We go. Eighth play of the drive. Ready. 
three. Watch it. Cone pressure off the edge, throwing on the run to Akers. And Akers makes the catch. The spot is very short, however. And it's relatively questionable. I'm looking at some of the replays. It looks like he actually got the line to gain. Let's go, let's go. Now, Brahma's hey, do not have that challenge available. Right, hey, we're go. going Falcon, 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 Falcon. Good eight. Are you ready? First down, first down. It's a first. It's now a first. it is a first down. And this is one of the first great down. things about the XFL. So Dean Blandino, one of the things he can change Stat by himself can is line to game. Minute. So he wants it to be right. Let's go. Hey. Double F speed. Hey. Stack, Double tap, right okay. Let's go. Uh, Say good. good Oscar go. Hey. Bad Oscar. No, no, no. Good Oscar. Good Oscar on Vegas. Ready. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. We're good. We out. An absolute chaos Vegas. when you hear the multiple communication devices, but that's what it's like in real time. Why is that? Trying to come up with the right call. Patrick, right side. Patrick, the ankle tackles ain't working on Jaquez Patrick. And here's the issue. Jaquez Patrick is a big running back. So if you're a cornerback, if you're a DB, you may not want to hit somebody who's 6'3", 242. <laughs> that's the danger that comes when you play defense and you're going against a running back that's built like a linebacker. Now, you're a big guy, so on defense, <laughs> how would you tackle him? Well, as an outside linebacker, I'm saying we're about the same size, so you're not looking at me and sizing me up. You're looking at the little guys doing that. So 23 seconds until the end of the first quarter. No, Brahma's will mayday, have to get a play mayday, call, mayday, a play mayday, off. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Three seconds for Cone to do oh, no. it. Quick pass. Patrick in the pass game into the 20 yard line. And that will know, bring us to the, the end of the first quarter. The Orlando Guardians playing without the leading receiver in the XFL, Cody Latimer. But Jordan Thomas making sure ain't missing him that much. He's got the lone score and the two-point conversion that followed. Guardians up, ain't nothing, and a must win for the Brahmas. Fighting until the end. It's in San Antonio's DNA. And inside the Alamo Dome, the Brahmas have pledged Keep fighting on the field until they are eliminated. A loss sends them packing, but they will get in to the XFL playoffs if they win their final two and Arlington loses their final two. That back would give them identical left. records, but with the third base. playoff tiebreaker being the combined record of the teams you've defeated, San Antonio would have that edge. Long Lindo here with Sam Ocho. Vegas, Vegas. First things go. first, you gotta score some points. Lady, Patrick has been the leader for the San Antonio offense. Cone going to TJ Vasher. Was he in? No. Sam, there's been so many close calls with Vasher, they cannot connect lately. Well, that was better than what we've seen all season. Most times we're seeing the quarterbacks overthrow T.J. Vasher. This time they gave him an opportunity. In high school, his coach said, man, all we would do in the red zone, we would just hurry up and throw it up to T.J. Obviously, you see a little bit of a bobble here. It's out of bounds, but he's the guy you want to give an opportunity to. I got a chance to talk to him before the game. He's every bit of 6'6". He's got all the talent in the world. Uh -huh. It's about the belief and getting him the ball. Here is John Parker Romo, who rushed on the field to kick a field goal to send the game to overtime last week, but we got a late timeout call here by Orlando. Um, Prior to the snap, timeout was called by Orlando. This is the first of the half. It's 30 seconds away. Parker Romo is as much of a breakout star in the XFL really as any player. He's been so consistent. You go back to that, that not even walk off of that walk in field goal, walk on field goal to take the game in overtime last week. Parker Romo is a model of consistency. You talk about it, 11 straight made field goals. Only miss was in week one. He's part of the reason why he's a huge part of this offense. Catch episode six of the XFL docuseries Player 54, Chasing the XFL Dream, available to stream on ESPN+. Plus. Directed by Peter Berg, this nine-part docuseries chronicles the creation of the XFL, and you get an all-access look at all eight teams. 38 yarders, let's do it again for Parker Romo. Also has an XFL record 57-yarder against Seattle earlier this season. The kick is up. 
put it on the board for John Parker Romo. This man is on fire. You could tell the trust that they have in him. I saw him and Heinz Ward before the game. He was kicking them from 60, and, and some of them are a little bit wide, but there is this confidence that you have in your kicker. My only question would be, in this desperation situation, why not go for it on that fourth down when you need points? It's still early. You need points. We also want to keep the game in check. Still early. Get your points. Rely on your defense. And then you can get touchdowns. You don't need to force it right now. Fitz, what do you got? Parker Romo told me before the game, he said, I'm good within 60. Stop asking me. I'm good within 60. <laughs> and when Terrell Buckley, head coach of Orlando, took that timeout, the attitude of this dude as a kicker, he looked at him and bowed as if to, as if to say thank you. Wow. Fitz, you know these kickers that perform at the highest level, they're a little different, and that confidence is a large part of it. Oh, the attitude. Look at Matt Prater in Arizona. Yeah, absolutely. Man, and Romo's got that attitude to him. He's got some swagger. And the bow to Buck, I thought that was absolutely <laughs> priceless. Hey, keep banging them through, and there's going to be opportunities. Dedrick Thomas from the five. Thomas to the 21. Here's Terrell Buckley a little while ago. He said we had two men on the right side, and, and uh, my linebacker thought he said two men on the field. So we called a timeout. Can we get that back? Hey, man, shoot your shot. Hey, it's worth, it's worth a try. <laughs> shoot your shot. Ask and he shall receive. Terrell Buckley Hell. said he's really trying to make this as fun of an experience in the final two weeks as he possibly can. I know gassers aren't fun. He said when they ran gassers this week, he did it with the team. Well, he said he only got through two of them. He said they were the full gassers, not the half gassers by any means. Quinn Dormany back to work. Oh! Dropped with authority by Drew Beasley. So, so we're going to watch Drew Beasley get this sack. So this inside move, he's worked it time and time again. I saw him do this same exact inside move a few times last week. He's at the top of your screen. You come up, you get the tackle over setting, and you club under. That's his second sack on the exact same move. He's just doing it now from the outside instead of the inside. That almost looked like the hit he put on Brandon Silvers <laughs> yes, last week. Yes, yes. Drew, Drew Beasley, not the biggest guy, but he's one of the guys who talked to their defensive coordinator. He knows how to get after the quarterback. Two sacks. Okay. To start the game. Yeah, we're going on two. And you know that Ghost makes Jim right. Herman a Ghost happy right. man. Ghost right, Dallas on two. Ghost right, Dallas on two. Ready? On two. Chris. Well, Quinn Dormany had a long conversation with his offensive line about the communication, particularly when they're backed up this deep. So it's extremely hard to hear. They're going to keep going with what they're doing. But Keith Wagner, offensive line coach, said they may have to stick or move to a silent count if the, the Again, crowd noise continues to bother them. Also big, Delonte Scott just came off the field. And Scott is the playmaker in the middle of that San Antonio defense. It was interesting, too, in overtime last week, the San Antonio fans in the end zone started telling all their brethren to come down and pack those seats to make it even louder. On the ground, Darrington, good open field tackle here by Terrell Hanks. You talk about that crowd noise, but it's not just the noise of the crowd, it's the newness of the offensive line. We've seen injuries for Orlando's offensive line. We've seen changes. And that's why you're saying, man, we need to get it either on a side account so we can all be on the same page. Third. Third and long. The dump down to Charles Rambo. Not gonna be nearly enough. But really, in these situations for Dormany, that's a win because of ball security. Yeah, it's a, it's a win, but the other piece of it, too, is you start feeling the pressure. Notice who was around the quarterback's legs. It was Drew Beasley move. once again. So if you cannot block on the offensive line, notice Dormany got sacked four times last week, and some of those turnovers were because of the offensive line. It's going to be a long day for Quentin Dormany. Matt Brown, the punt. Teams cannot get one yard downfield. It's a fake! Matt Sam. <laughs> well, we talked about it before.
before this game even started, we said, man, who's got to make a play? And we were talking <laughs> offline. You said it's got to be KD Cannon, Jordan Thomas, two players who are new to this offense. KD Cannon, the receiver, doesn't do it in the receiving, does it in special teams. Look at it, this motion. People can get a little bit lazy, and all of a sudden, this, you're playing with nothing to lose. KD <laughs> Cannon goes and Randy Moss is on him. <laughs> you got Moss. <laughs> Here we go, here we go. 69 Nine. yards. And now left side of the screen, the bottom right side is Jordan in. Thomas. Right Jordan being pressured. Complete for a short game to Ryan Becker. Sam, my head is spinning. Well, so in the NFL, they talk about it being a copycat league. It seems like the XFL is as well. Last week, we saw St. Louis do a fake punt. Right. Wasn't the same, but it was similar. Right. Same right. thing, it works Thor. again. Corvette, flank right, Zithor, Corvette, on one, ready? Orlando has made such Stop. gutsy play calls, special teams, White. the past couple of weeks. Nothing to lose. Darrington, shaking. Darrington, upended, still going. We got a scrum at the one yard line. You talk about nothing to lose. The way that Orlando started last week's game, Lowell, well, was on the, the kick. It was a kickoff return, and it was a reverse. They ran so many fake reverses. So this offense is going after it. An offense and special teams by any means necessary to find a win. Reload, Q. Reload. Hit second. Flank right, flank right, Z Sor, Bison right. All one, ready? Ace. Darrington with the carry, he's in! The fake punt leads to a touchdown. Slam it with the exclamation. Special teams have to be special. And yes, that was Devin Darrington, Harvard grad with the touchdown. But it was that field position, the 69-yard pass on punt that allowed the offense to have this Aladdin. position. Huddle, huddle. It's going to be a one-point conversion on, on. for Orlando. Twins right, scout right, X fade, Quinty. On one, on one, ready? After the last touchdown, they converted their first two-pointer all season long. They're six of 13 Wait. on the one-pointers. Dormady looking middle of the field for Eli Rogers, incomplete. 14 to three, Guardians leaving it all on the field. The Mac Brown fake punt sets up Devin Darrington for the score. Orlando fearless here in San Antonio. Mac Brown was a two-time semifinalist for the Danny Warfel Trophy. I think he made that legacy proud with this absolute dime to KD Cannon, who did the rest, setting Orlando up for a touchdown. Here's Chris Budd moments ago. Uh, Mac, you told me you've run that a few times in practice. What was the reaction when you finally got the call to rip it? Honestly, it was, uh, I, was just, I was just ready to go. I was waiting on that call uh, all season long, and uh, I think, honestly, just, just got lucky. You let it rip. Where's the arm come from? It comes from uh, tons of time throwing with my pops in the backyard or throwing with the boys up in Minnesota. Shout out the boys up in Minnesota, man. Uh, but yeah, credit to the guy. Credit to 15 for making the play. And your parents are here to watch it. What's this like to be able to celebrate with them? It's great. It's great. I'm very lucky to have a great family. So shout out them for coming out today. I appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Travis Johnson brought down by Ryan Becker. Pops loves it. This was a conversation pregame with Terrell Buckley about that play. So we get out, we're going to call it now. Absolutely. If you see, when, you, when he goes in motion, yeah. if you see him running with him, then we're probably going to have what? The backside. Yeah, backside, Jay. If you don't see yep. him running, then we probably have the front side. Yep. Gotcha. Just do what you do. Absolutely. Sam, just do what you do? Well, I love the confidence. That's the confidence that a coach can instill in their player. I trust you to make the right decision. Jack Cone to throw. Cone complete to TJ Vasher. 
to the 30-yard line. Chris. By the way, Matt came up and apologized to me because we were chatting earlier, and he said I knew the whole time, but I, I really wanted to tell you, but I couldn't. By the way, he has raised $148,000 for ALS. He had a childhood friend's dad pass away from it. Started a lemonade stand when he was a young boy back in Minnesota. It kept growing and growing. His sister now does it. They call it the awesome lemonade stand. They have it every June back in Minnesota. He's going to continue it this year, but close to $150,000 raised for ALS. Chris, that is an amazing story as Alizé Mack with the dropsies. And Sam, great things happen to great people. And sometimes you look at it, man, you're doing all this stuff in the community for your family. Now you get this opportunity, and then all of a sudden you get this great play and even more awareness for what you're doing back home. And so kudos to Mac Brown and his foundation. Can only imagine what dad's phone looks like right now. <laughs> Blow hey, it up. Good Oscar on Vegas. Ready? Same good Oscar. That could be the next quarterback guru right there. He said, you heard what he said about me. I was throwing with him in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> Omaha, Omaha, we go. Hilleman. And the Orlando Guardians don't look like a team that have one win on the season. And that's what Buckley told us coming into this game. Practices look like it's a seven and one team, not a one and seven team. They're playing free, and that's what we've seen the last few weeks. Even with that DC win, it built this confidence, and that has kept with them, even though they struggled last week. See the next game's up, Arlington, D.C. And Seattle, St. Louis. Now check this out, bottom Vegas. of the defensive line for Orlando. That's Jordan Thomas checking Fight. in to rush. Fight. Thomas has the first touchdown catch by the Guardians. Got pancaked. Hilleman checked down, it's gonna be close. The spot is right at the sticks. It should be a first down. But why why'd you have to say it like that, though? Well, you know, he's got pancakes. Because he did. You know, he's, a, he's a tight end. He's a receiver. Sometimes you get up in that D-line. It makes a lot of noise, but he's trying to help. Their front seven is a little bit banged up. And so that's why he's an offensive guy going to help on the defensive side. You just want me to say he fell over? Uh, I'm yeah. going to give the guy the props with the mids in the end the, zone. The, the tone and what you got, <laughs> got pancakes. Yeah, Vegas. I'll let you handle that one next stop. <laughs> it was a great effort, Jordan. <laughs> Hilleman now starting to get some momentum. Give him four yards. Nickel, nickel. Hilleman, out of Rutgers, started his career at Boston College. Right, get in the huddle, get in the huddle, get in the huddle. Where he had 13 rushing touchdowns as a freshman. Guardians defensive player is down. That is Trayvon Sanders. We'll check in on Sanders' condition when we return to the Alamo Dome. XFL is brought to you by Arby's. Arby's, we have the meats. And Volvo XC90 Recharge Plug-in Hybrid. I feel awful reading that billboard. We have the meats. Over the Brahma Bulls, we're the mascot of the San Antonio team. I was set up, Sam. That's great marketing from, from a marketing team. So let's put it that way. Uh, uh, a great connection with the cattle industry here in Texas. It's, it's such part of the fabric of the state. The name Brahmas, MacArthur High School in Vegas. San Antonio. They're the Brahmas as well. It just felt a little awkward. Aye, my son. Second and six for the Brahmas. And there is Hilleman. So Hilleman will set up a third down and short. To me, Sam, right now, this is coming down to an ultra-aggressive Orlando team with a San Antonio team that's had three fourth and shorts but have only gone for it once. One team is playing looser. One team is playing as if they Vegas, can't right. afford to lose. And that's the hard part. Trips, trips you don't want to play trips tight. Left. Trips left. X spot, X spot. Hey, landed, landed, landed. That's it. No, flare, flare. Late. Oh, on the play clock. Omaha, we go. One second. Cone drops it. Got it back. Here comes the pressure, and he will not elude Terrence Smith. The second leading tackler for the Gardens got him for a loss. And you heard it earlier, Terrence Smith actually had dropped into coverage, but when that ball is on the ground, see ball, get ball, he actually gets out of his coverage assignment, he understands his sm speed, and he goes and gets a sack. That's called being a football player. Sometimes you have to go do what it's, what's required to help your team win. Here's Brad Wing. Have we seen Wing's arm yet? San Antonio needs something going. 
Brooks is a boomer to Justin Rogers. Backpedaling now at the 10. Four Brahmas there, and he's brought down by Ty Smith. Week 9 continues tomorrow afternoon at 9 Eastern with an ESPN doubleheader. Starts with the Defenders hosting the Renegades, followed by a big one between the Sea Dragons and Battlehawks. Every game is also available on ESPN+. Plus. So if this score holds, the Arlington game, for their standpoint getting in, that will be irrelevant because they are in with the San Antonio loss. If San Antonio does not find a way to win this game, then all of a sudden, you talked about it, their playoff folks are eliminated. Darrington fighting for yards. That's a loss of two. Meanwhile, DeAndre Francois has checked in at quarterback. This is something that Terrell Buckley told us coming into the game. He wanted to get back to. Felt like he could have mixed in Francois in the middle of the last game when Dormady was struggling with five turnovers. And he added the piece about opportunity. He said, I want to give DeAndre Francois his opportunity as well to shine like he did in college. Play action, Francois, he's got some wheels, but not enough to get away from Sean Williams. Here's Fitz with an injury update. The Brahmas will be without their starting nose tackle, the Colorado Buffalo, Javier Edwards. He's out with a shoulder injury, done for the day, guys. That is a uh, big blow for a stout man in the middle of that San Antonio defense that has settled in after the opening drive in which Orlando drove the length of the field Got on the board with Jordan Thomas. And there's only a 51-man roster in the XFL, and so when players get injured, that depth is even more thin than you would expect. That's why we saw Jordan Thomas playing defensive end. Orlando's second time out of the half. It's a 30-second break. Guardians take timeout number two. What do you think of the start so far, Sam? I've been impressed by Orlando. We didn't know what to expect based off of their five turnover performance last week. But offensively, they're putting up points like they did over the last half of the season. On the other side with San Antonio, I understand some of the decisions not to go for it on the third and short and fourth and short. But sooner or later, you have to just let yourself go because if you don't, a loss will be imminent. The fake punt is the difference in this game. And Chris, from what I understand, there's a special name to the play. Yes, they call it the Blandino because Terrell Buckley had to send the play to our rules aficionado, Dean Blandino, to approve it because there's guys in motion. So it has been dubbed the Blandino. That is amazing. Dean Blandino now immortalized in XFL history with one of the best trick plays we've seen. Francois to Eli Rogers. Rogers trying to get the corner. The stiff arm is going to be close. And it's a first down. So, Dean, what do you think? You've got your first play named after you now. So I knew going in that they named it the Blandino. And, and not that I have a, a rooting interest, but I just wanted the play to go well. I didn't think it was going to go that well, but I wanted it to go well. <laughs> That, that's the biggest smile I've seen on your face, Dean, all season long. You got the play named after you, and it worked 69 yards later. <laughs> on top of the spring football world right there. Carrington oh, somehow oh. slips out of the tackle, and he gets nine yards on first down. I think Dean blushed a little bit as well. <laughs> he did. And that's the thing. So if you're a coach, that's a smart play. It's saying, okay, I know I want to run this, but let's make sure we don't get called for any kind of penalty, any kind of illegal procedure or illegal formation. Let's get it all situated. And it's also kissing up a little bit to the VP of officiating. <laughs> now, Dean calls it as he sees it. Dean has done a fabulous job all season long in the XFL Command Center in Van Nuys, California. Darrington again. Darrington picking up a lot of the slack with Jermaine Martin out. Last week, this is an Orlando team that had 16 carries for 25 yards. A lot more success on the ground. They were up to 48. And some of that may be attributed to the loss of Javier Edwards. We talk about his size, about 350 pounds. Missing him in the middle will affect your run defense tremendously. Orlando eliminated last week. San Antonio needs back-to-back -back wins, back-to-back losses by Arlington to go. 
They lose here, it's done. And the Renegades are in. Francois on the run. Trying to beat Williams, he's forced out of bounds. Flag on the play. Down. Holding, offense, number 77. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. It's going to go against Abdul Beecham, another local, local guy, Cibolo, which is also just north on I-35 here in San Antonio area. And you want to know who caused that penalty? It was Drew, Be Drew Beasley, excuse me. And I think they actually caught it on the wrong person. It really wasn't on Abdul Beecham, number 77. It was on number 78, the new right tackle. That's who that play was on. And so we see when the, what the effect is. T.J. Bradley got the holding. But it's Drew Beasley affecting the quarterback. Beecham is slid over to right guard. Francois with the draw. Francois, such a brilliant start to his career at Florida State. He was the ACC Rookie of the Year in 2016 over Daniel Jones, who just cashed in a large contract. However, next season, hurt his knee in the season opener against Alabama was dismissed in 2019 and it's been a climb back ever since. But he was one of the highest, highly, most highly touted recruits in high school. And funny enough, Jock West Patrick, who went to Florida State as well, was actually at his recruitment announcement ceremony when he got recruited and committed to Florida State. Coming up on the two minute warning. Francois to throw behind Jordan Thomas. Drew Beasley with the hit. And the clock will run up until the final two minutes. I'll take the two minute warning and then the timing will go to the college rules. Orlando with the lead on San Antonio 14 to three and a must win game inside the dome for the Brahmins. It's week number nine in the XFL season. And here we are, deep in the heart of Texas, inside the Alamo City, where Orlando leads the hometown Brahma's 14 to three. Let's take a look at tonight's game flow, brought to you by Progressive. I'd like to see a few more deep balls at eight to one. Sometimes the uncontrolled screaming, the best part of the mic up because it's pure joy from Terrell Buckley. Third and 17, Brahma's need a stop. That's Andrew Jamil in motion. DeAndre Francois, the quarterback, will play it safe. And that is Dedrick Thomas, met by the Brahma's defense, but Jordan Williams and Sean Williams, no relation. Just two absolute studs from the Brahma defense. Jordan Williams, stand out at Baylor. Sean Williams, the former winner of the Defender of the Nation Award at Navy, given to the top player in America from a military school. And while he was at sea, he would train. He would get up early. He would get on the treadmill. He'd find ways to get and keep his body in shape even while he was serving the country. He was assigned to the USS Gerald R. Ford, utilized the different spaces on deck, below deck for workouts, push-ups and sit-ups in his cabin, lifted weights in the storage room, ran sprints on the flight deck. But the big question is, is it Blandino part two? <laughs> no. <laughs> Matt Brown's gonna boom it. Akers at the five. Akers slips out of one tackle. Not that one. DeAndre Francois, Quint Dormady checking out the film. 
Their offense has sputtered since the opening drive. Special teams picked them up with the Blandino that led to a touchdown. For San Antonio, though, how do they get it going? Well, they've had no offense so far. You've been running the ball effectively. I understand that. But sooner or later, you have to get the ball downfield. The difficulty is your offensive line hasn't protected. Even in seven-man protection last week, you gave up sacks. And so... The offensive line has to get together so Jack Cole can get the ball down the field. Hey, Under two minutes, that? the clock is going to work like a college football. Patrick met in a hurry by Errol Thompson. That's a guy t Buck right says left. is our thumper. And you heard it, you felt it. But this Orlando offense and defense, you feel the urgency in their play. 57, another cadence, another cadence, 57. Need to see some urgency from the Brahmas. They got one timeout. We go. Under 90 seconds. They need to score in the worst way. Cone thought about taking the shot, held it too long. And that is complete to Nick Holly. Contact rules like the NFL. That will momentarily stop the, the clock flat. while the chains are reset. Another cadence, another cadence. We go. It's time to Fred Brown. That's the one you can't have in this situation. So, of course, you want to get the ball past the first down marker to stop the clock. You still have a little bit of time. Hey, 66, 66, 66. At the, at the end of the you day, have you, you have, have to elongate the field. You have to give the defense something to be threatened by. And again, short of the sticks, Patrick is able to keep rumbling to the 40 he goes. We know about the leg of Parker Romo. Is Heinz Ward thinking six, though? Guardians player is down. Orlando cannot stop the clock for the rest of this first half. And that is Jaquan Blakely being checked out and jogging off. Hey, hey, tackle, tackle. Blakely out of Tennessee. Romo out of Virginia Tech. So clutch. Distance, not an issue for him. He's got an XFL record 57-yarder. He's already slammed home one earlier. The lone points for the Brahmins. But those passes short of the first down marker, those were the type of plays that absolutely killed Vegas in the early game to get today against Houston. And, and it's not just that. It's... it's I understand things being open, but if you want to win in a game Vegas, like this, Vegas. even if the space isn't as open downfield, you have you to have take a risk. Why is that? Cohen. Holly! Got it! Inside the 10! There's your risk. <laughs> it's a 34-yard game. Middle of the field was wide open. Great read by Jack Cohn. And that's what you see when the offensive line is protected. Nick Hawley, great story out of Kent State, where he played with his brother. San Antonio has called their third and final Think about everything he went through from 2015 through 2017. Tore his ACL twice, tore his MCL once, and also broke his back. Yet here he is getting the Brahmas in great position for their first offensive touchdown. And he was part of the XFL in the previous version. He played in the CFL with his brother. Nick Holly has been through so much, but he's a story of redemption. He was with the Houston Roughnecks earlier this season. Now he's got his opportunity. And you see it here. The middle field's going to be open. Jack Cohn's going to read it quickly and get the ball up and down over the outstretched arms of the defender. That's what we haven't seen for a few weeks with this offense. Those long gains, big gains, it stretches the defense and it forces you to play a little bit Good further back, gum. which will open up the shorter left. throws if you need them. Good eight, Bib, gum. Got an RPO. So 34 hey, yards to Hall. Good eight, Good by eight two on yards. Vegas, ready. That is the longest play of the season for the Brahmins. Cannot walk away here with three. Omaha, Omaha, we go. Not with the season on the line. Patrick dancing, waltzing into the end zone. It's a big fella with great footwork. And here come the Brahmins. Jacquez, sweet feet, Patrick. 
For as big as he is, he moves with such agility and such quickness. He knows how to find the end zone. Did it at Florida State. Did it at the NFL. And now finally, you had to get a first down or really a <laughs> touchdown. No more timeouts. He avoids the defender, gets it to the end zone. Jacques Patrick, have a day. I'd say. Now lining up for the one point one double, conversion. Good buff gun, Zeke on Vegas. Ready? I'm going gun. I'm going gun. Here we go. Fred. And this is simply what San Antonio does where they are most comfortable. Omaha, 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 go. Oh, to Brand, Brown, and Cohn was able to coach the official into throwing the flag. Right here, Andy. Just turn to the five. Turn to the five. Pass interference, defense, number 27. Foul occurs in the end zone. Penalty, put the ball to one yard line. Repeat the try for one. So even though you're moving it up from the two, anytime you declare what conversion you are going for after a penalty, even if the ball moves up, it's worth the same oh, no. amount of points you originally declared. Anchors in motion. Oh, Patrick, the running back. Finish what you start. <laughs> so good. By any means necessary. He did it with his feet. Now he's doing it in the air, jumping over bodies. He's ran over people in the screen game. Jock West Patrick is the reason his team is in this game. Notice, when the game is on the line, give it to your best player, let him do the rest. Jump over, hurdle, one foot, two foot, doesn't matter. Just get that ball in that end zone, baby. What did Heinz Ward tell us coming into this game? We needed a desperate team to make a desperate effort. Are you seeing that, Sam? I'm seeing that. This team is playing desperate. We're seeing the wrist that we talked about earlier in the game. Getting the ball down the field. We're seeing the defense stepping up. When the game is on the line, this is playoff football. You have to be and play desperate and also find that thing within to say, you know what, I don't care what else is going on, fake punts, what have you, I'm going to be the one that helps my team win. Hey, what this is is a guy that trusts the process. I criticize them for not being aggressive enough on fourth down plays, but Heinz Ward knows his approach. Trust the process, and it's working. Here's Dedrick Thomas. Thomas looking for a seam and brought down at the 25. Here's Terrell Buckley, wired. He's not happy. Why, did, why is Balin, why is Balin pressing? Terry! Oh my gosh, man. Sam, what's he talking about? And so we said that carry piece, so the middle field runner looked like they turned the wrong way. If you're going to do a cover two like that, you have someone running down the middle of the field. You check one side, check the other side. They turned the wrong way, and that's why you saw the receiver wide open in the middle of the field. Defense. Oh, Decline it. Orlando Let's get the hell out of is lining up content to take this Billing one into the Defense half. 12 players on the field. Pillars decline. It's the end of the first half. And they will. Orlando. They're playing for pride right now, trying to go out on a good note. Two games left, eliminated from the playoffs. They've had all the magic, the surprises, but San Antonio has stayed the course. You cannot sum up just how big that Patrick touchdown was for them. And how big this halftime speech, halftime conversation, halftime soul searching is going to be for this team. Everything is on the line for San Antonio. This is their playoff game. It's a must win. You win and you continue. Everything on the line for the Brahmas faithful. They need two straight wins to have a chance. Jordan Thomas playing keep away. Orlando, the trickeration to set up the touchdown. But body blow after body blow leading to a big one for Patrick. It's 14 to 10 Guardians. San Antonio, Logan, Lindo, Sam Ocho. Real quick, who goes number one overall? I'm feeling Bryce Young, but you can't go wrong with him or C.J. Stroud. I love it. Orlando up 14 to 10. San Antonio making its way to and from the locker room. Here's Terrell Buckley, the Guardians head coach in the locker room. Oh, we win. We're up with a 0 0. We got to finish, man. We have yet to finish the game the right way, right? Yes, sir. Let's finish. 
not by chance and all. Let's go out and do our job. Let's dominate. We put ourselves in a great position. Let's go out and finish. Defense, if they don't score, we win. Yeah. If they don't score, we win. Go out and play like it means something to you. Orlando Guardians. Stay Stay go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, that is a team showing so much fight. And it brings us to our first half stats brought to you by Progressive. What's standing out, Sam? What stands out is what's not seen. It's the hidden yardage. Notice Orlando has less total yards than San Antonio, but it was that fake punt, those hidden yards, special teams. That has been all the difference in this game. Can you finish? That's been critical for Orlando. Meanwhile, San Antonio has had problems finishing as well. You just go back to what happened in this building in week number one against San St. Louis, where they allowed two scores in the final 90 seconds. Think about the impact of that play, too. If San Antonio closes that game out, their playoff picture is entirely different. And their team is entirely different. A win like that builds confidence. All of a sudden, you say, I know how to win the close games. And then not only that, you go to Heinz Ward saying, we have to find a way to win in the dome, to win at home. They're searching, seeking, finding a way to get one win. They escaped you before. Maybe this will be the day that you find it. And oh, by the way, that was Paxton Lynch warming up with Jack Cohen. Lynch is now the backup quarterback for the San Antonio Brahmas after starting the season as the number one guy for Terrell Buckley and the Guardians. And Paxton Lynch, he started with Orlando, and now he's with San Antonio just a few weeks ago. You talk about this opportunity. Well, he's looking for it as well. He may get his opportunity today, and if not, could be next week. Looking for a big return. From Fred Brown, got one a few weeks ago in Vegas. Oh, high-speed collision. Jeremiah Gimmel. They both hold, so our spot matters. What's your number, Justin? 31. Gimmel got him. Willie, you? Same number. Same number, 31. Okay. 27. Okay, 27. 27. Okay. During the return, holding return team number 27. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, San Antonio. Well, we've seen Mac Brown throw a bomb, and a guy that Mac Brown coached at North Carolina <laughs> drop one, and that's Jeremiah Gimmel. Jeremiah Gimmel, he was a captain in North Carolina for the head coach, Mac Brown, not the punter, Mac Brown. Oh, Vegas, and he's a captain because of his leadership. We talk about this opportunity for the XFL. You may not be playing on defense. You're out there on Vegas, special teams. Vegas. Run down, make a play, people. Chef, 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 no. chef. Patrick Vegas, has been Vegas, impressive Vegas. at running back. Seven carries, 39 Aye. yards. Aye. And back to Patrick. He's trying to join Abram Smith from D.C. as the only players with multiple 90-yard rushing games this season. Let's go one on. There is Jimmy Johnson. Fake good bull lock trail. Huddle, huddle. One on. Fake good bull lock huddle. trail. Hey, fake good bull. Fake good bull on Vegas. Ready. Make sure you get out, J.P. That is the offensive coordinator for the Brahmas calling plays for the fifth straight game. Taking Vegas, over Vegas. for Jaime Elizondo. San Antonio Why? really wanted to spread it out when Johnson took over. They tightened up their formations lately. Patrick, lethal out of the backfield. Move him. One benefit of the check down is when you get it to a guy like Jacquez Patrick, because why? He's going to get yards after contact. People don't want to tackle a guy who's 240 pounds, so trust him and get the ball in his hands. Bad A Bib on Vegas, ready. Hey, it should be good. Cone 16 of 19 in the first half for 156. Omaha, Omaha, we go. Trust the big fella. It's got to be good. Gerald Willis, however, makes a stop. You hear him talking about, man, it's got to be good. Well, good for this offense, it's to the to the right, bad is to the left. And so we say, man, based on this formation, our play call is actually wrong. And that's why we didn't see that play be as effective as we would have hoped. Four rib, 74 rib. On Vegas, ready. Nick Hawley now Vegas, at running back. Who's Mike? Who's Mike? Motions out. Why? My son. Cohen with the wheels. He's just good enough there. And we heard him asking with the live mic, who's the mic, who's the mic? What's the significance of that? Well, the significance is for the offensive line. It depends on who you're going to slide to, who you're going to block. And so that helps identify, hey, who's our Mike linebacker? Because that's who our center has to block. Because our running back, quote unquote, it was a receiver, is motioning out. 
Who's the mic? Vegas, Vegas. We go. Third and five for the former Wisconsin and Notre Dame quarterback, Jack Cohn. Cohn to an open man. Hit immediately, but hauled in by Travis Toivonen. The only Brahma averaging more than 10 yards per catch this season. Just doesn't have a lot of catches to his credit. Former standout at North Dakota. Not North Dakota State. Bad Bear, Bad North Bear, Dakota. Dakota. Vegas ready. Bad Bear. And he played in other spring football leagues. He was MVP caliber. He knows how to succeed at this level. Enormous third down conversion oh, oh, there for the Broncos. Back to the beef. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Steady diet of Patrick. And Number this, three rusher in the XFL. Yeah, and this slow, methodical drive can seem a bit boring, but this is the time. They call it the hey, alumni good zone. Pain, good Middle pain, of the good field pain on Vegas, where you right. can take a shot down the field. Uh, I believe you're over here. Now you're over here. And from the jump, this is the offense that Hines Ward wanted. Heidi, my son. Delay to Patrick. And brought down by Terrence Plummer. Plummer out of Central Florida. The Fiesta Bowl defensive MVP in 2013 after beating the Baylor Bears. He's got three games in his NFL career. Made one tackle in those three 76 games. 76 rib, 76 rib on Vegas, ready. Can only imagine go, what it's like set. to want to get that taste Who's again. That's what Vegas. he's playing for in these final two. Sometimes record doesn't matter, opportunity matters. Lady, my son. Cone throwing towards the pressure. Yeah. Hillman slips out, cut back. Fasher gives him a block. Inside the 20. Good read by Cone. Better downfield block by TJ Vasher. So I talked to Jonathan Hilleman before the game. This guy could have gone anywhere. Could have gone to Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan. Chose Boston College and transferred to Rutgers. Was a leading touchdown getter when it comes to running backs. He's elite on his feet. He went to play for the New York Giants. Backed up Saquon Barkley. He learned from the best. That was his favorite team. Now he's doing it here in San Antonio in the XFL. Yes, hoping yes, to get yes, back yes. to the NFL. Holly in the backfield. Stays Omaha, there for the Omaha, moment. Go. Cohen comfortable. Alizé Mack, another Golden Domer like Cohn. Alizé Mack, one of the top recruits coming out of high school as well. Went to the New Orleans Saints, got coached by tight end coach at that time, Dan Campbell. They've been waiting for him to expand that and explode Bill. in this that offense. Maybe this is going to be the day as we see this rhythm start to come. And this is T.J. Vasher territory. He's good for a grab or a P.I. Bottom of your screen. Number 18. Omaha, Omaha, we go. And Patrick hit immediately by Gerald Willis. Kept slogging for maybe an extra yard. Big third down. You heard, you heard Hines Ward say, come on, we got to score. You're in the red zone again. Three oh, points go, will nickel, not nickel, cut nickel. it. Let's go. Double F, fix, yak. Double left fix Jack. Let's go sprint right pylons. Hey, sprint right, sprint right, sprint right. 44 sprint right. Jacksonville zero. 44 Jacksonville zero. 44 Jacksonville zero. Vegas, zero. Vegas. We go. Hey, watch it. Cone moves the pocket. We'll have to throw it away. Now with the one point conversion yeah. after the touchdown right before the half, you bring out your field goal unit and you're still down by a score. You're still down, and, and I, I, I get the frustration from the fans, and, and I understand getting points, but down the line you're saying, man, what is going on in the red zone for our offense? We like points, but we like touchdowns more than we like field goals. Saw it last week against Houston. Had a first and goal from the one on the opening drive. Three straight tackles for loss, backed up. Then could not score in the overtime period. 29 yarders. Romo up and good. That man is locked in. A couple of scores for the Brahmas. They move within one. Hans Ward and the San Antonio Brahmas need this dub to stay in the hunt in the XFL playoff race. 
This has been the story with the live line, according to Caesar Sportsbook. A kick. The Brahmas favored by two at the end of the first quarter. After that touchdown by Jordan Thomas, Orlando favored by two and a half. Moments ago on the break, it was Orlando by one and a hook. And right now, San Antonio is the favorite. I don't know if I'm feeling this, Sam. I just think Orlando has a lot more potential to score than San Antonio does. That's what it's felt like all game long. And maybe, all season. Oh, I'll say that's, that's correct, all season long. And this Orlando team, though, has to respond to those points. How do you respond in the second half? They've started strong every single game. They have not finished. We heard Terrell Buckley say it at halftime. Let's see how they respond right now. Dedrick Thomas, second tackler for the Brahmas, bringing him down. Week number nine continues tomorrow afternoon at noon Eastern with an ESPN doubleheader. Starts with the defenders hosting the Renegades, followed by a big one between the Sea Dragons and Battle Hawks. Every game is also available on ESPN Plus. The Dome and America Center is going to be off the chain. That place is going to be packed. They're shooting for 40,000 plus. I think they get it for that matchup against Seattle. With all roads leading back here, the downtown San Antonio, the Alamo Dome, site to the XFL Championship. Quentin Dormady back at quarterback, tucked it in, and Dormady will have the first down yardage. Check in with Chris Button. Lola, I talked with Terrell Buckley coming out of halftime about going deep in the playbook with that Blandino play call. He said that's always been the fabric of who we are. The difference now, it's my decision. I'm the one telling him we're going to run these plays. He's had a very big evolution in terms of being a head coach from week one until now. He's written a journal that he says is about 75 pages full. The biggest thing he says he's learned is that trust yourself. You know more than you know. He's relied so much on other coaches and the advice from them. He said, Deep down inside, I think I knew all these things from the very beginning. I just needed to trust myself. Ace right, ace right. Great story, Chris. Ace right, ace right, ace right. So Dormady was a yard shy of the first down on the scramble, but picked it up with Eli Rogers. Okay. Learning process, not just for the players, David, David, but for the coaches as well. What is that? As Dormady looks to throw. And throws that away. That is very similar to the conversation that we had with Heinz Ward before the game up in Seattle, where he's had to learn to trust himself. He hired his OC, DC, and then let them draft all the players. The guy he hired as the offensive coordinator isn't even calling plays anymore. He talked about not knowing some of the coaches. He said, I wish I would have known them beforehand because that trust is a big piece. But also he said, I'm learning as a coach as well. We're getting to know one another. We're getting to know our team. And now we're trying to find ways to win. Dormady shot over the middle. Too high, too hot. Looking for Jalen Smith. And the reason that matters, Lowell, is some coaches have different coaching styles, different methodologies. And so if you know that going into it, then you have a better idea of how to work with someone. But now you're trying to learn all the players, how to work with them. Now you learn how to work with and manage the coaches. It makes it a lot much tougher of a task. Correct me if I'm wrong, but as a player, you're focused on how can you be the best as an individual. As a head coach, you got to worry about everybody and everything. Here's a third and ten. Hey, easy, easy. Hey, roll, San Antonio roll, roll. getting rounded. Hey, ace right, ace right. Sarah, Sarah. Sorry. Dormady, the pride of Bernie, floats it. Rogers had it, dropped it. Forced out by Anthony Tejada. So he didn't drop it, Low. You said it right the second time. It was forced out by Ranthony Tejada. Ranthony Tejada played in the NFL as well. He played for the Washington football team. This dude wants to get back to the NFL. He actually was playing in the CFL. He terminated his contract to say, I want to either get in the XFL or the NFL. Ranthony Tejada, his brother Raleigh, plays for the Houston Roughnecks, making, taking advantage of every opportunity. Landon Akers back. Here's Mac Brown. Mac Brown. This is going to be a short punt, and it's going to be down around the 30-yard line. So the Orlando offense stalling after their opening drive that led to a touchdown by Jordan Thomas. They got another one, but that was a result of a 69-yard fake punt pass to KD Cannon. 
One of the benefits of the XFL is they have these tablets on the sideline. In the NFL and in college, you can see pictures. Now, you actually have the entire video. So you see Sean Williams. He was a linebacker. Now he's playing safety. Talking to Jordan Williams and Rico Jeffers, who finally came back communicating ways they can get better from a play that just happened previously. This type of communication is what great defenses do. This is why they're the number one ranked defense in the XFL. It's not just coaches coaching players, it's players coaching players. That's called ownership. That's what the XFL is all about. Setting up real-time adjustments. San Antonio back in the picture. Angus, Angus! After a late touchdown drive in the first Forget half. Capped by Jaquez Patrick. Hilleman's the running back. Jack Cohn. That was a Matt will try to get up and drag a defender with him. See, NFL rules in terms of got to be down by contact, not like college, where if you fall over, you're done. So Three Matt out. fighting for those hey, 369. extra yards. 369, 369, I'm Vegas, ready. This is not a prolific San Antonio offense. Taylor, J. Hill. Patrick's Vegas. touchdown was just the fourth offensive touchdown in the last six games for the Brahmins. Check down to Hilleman. We've got a flag. Flag down. Flag the last down. win by San Antonio. They did not have an offensive touchdown. They scored on defense. They might need another one of those here. What was the results game? of the play? First down. First down? Okay. Holding offense number 62, 10 yard penalty, repeat second down. Dwayne Wallace out of Kansas, the guilty party, moving the offense back. Jack Cohn, by the way, season high 208 passing yards. We've seen throughout the course of the season his completion percentage will Good look pretty good. 75 Thunder on Vegas, ready. But the ball just doesn't move anywhere. We're not seeing the ball historically get down the field. Now, we the saw mic? a little bit of that today. I expect more of that because the season is on the line. Omaha, Omaha, I'm go. Cone going through his progressions. is going to be brought down by Jaquan Blakely. So one frustrating part about a sack like hey, this, go yes, it's a coverage it's sack. It was a three-man rush, one row, but it's a three-man rush. Go <laughs> oh. Going, 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 going. Spread right. 66. Auto stop. YBN. 66. 66 hey, on Vegas. Ready. 66. Okay. Double, stop, double buzz. Odd double buzz. Tight, 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 tight. Tell tight. Tell tight. Vegas. Vegas. Tight. Tight. Let's go. Get out. That's a three-man rush. Tight. Double right buzz. Side. Get out underneath the out routes. Cole wants it all. Holly's open. Has it. Into Orlando territory. One thing about the buzz, if you're buzzing underneath the out route, someone has to stay over the deep routes. That's why you see the anger and the frustration. You hear that double buzz, double buzz. Eyes on the quarterback, but you have to run with that. So Nick Holly gets behind the defender. They weren't expecting the deeper route, and that's where the, the problem in that play. 44 yards, the longest play all season for San Antonio. Hey, my son. Cole, flushed. And we'll float this one out of bounds. How about the spark from Nick Hawley? Had that 44-yarder to follow a 34-yarder for an offense that was like running on a treadmill all season long. No big play. You got to get in where you fit in. Nick Hawley didn't necessarily fit Vegas, in right? in Houston. Now he's getting in in San Antonio. Two huge plays, 34-yarder, 44-yarder. This is the offense you've been Vegas. waiting to see all season long. He was a landscaper hey, get set, get set. before he got his original call set, with the set. XFL back in 2020. Why? Why, I think he'll take this lifestyle. Cone, Hilleman, few yards. Again, this is Heinz Ward trusting the process. Now a field goal. Yak to spread right. If that's what it comes down to, gives the promise a lead go. for the first 56, time. 56, 56 on Vegas, ready. Now this is third and seven. You talk Chevy, about trusting the process, but red zone matters. So you got to get Vegas, Vegas. seven yards to keep this drive Here alive. Go. Lady, my son. 
Big pressure by Orlando. Cone sees it. Turns it in. Touchdown. 28 yards. Bravo's take the up. lead. They ain't done yet. Let's, let's Travis Torbanen, he's played with the best of them. We talked about it in North Dakota. Then he said, I'm going to try something different. Fan control football. He got voted as one of the best players there. Now he's saying, I can compete anywhere I go. Cone with brilliant recognition. Orlando brought the house, Sam. And this was the drive of big plays. It's been the game of big plays. San Antonio has needed them. They have not found them. And on that drive, Major, Major. Cone, four of five. Now going for two. Bison. Hilleman is going to have to beat two Guardians. Nearly did. But the Brahmas trust in the process. Orlando brought the heat. Cohen stood tall. Hines Ward believing. Travis Torbanen with the catch, broken tackle, and finds the end zone. Even if it's a shorter pass, get those yards after catch. What you want? What you want? Winning in San Antonio is at the top of the list, along with staying alive in the playoff hunt for Heinz Ward. He loves these fans. It's an amazing city with amazing people and sports fans. They've not won in this building. He wants this for the fans as bad as he wants it for his team and for himself. The first thing we heard when we met with Heinz Ward was, I want to win for these fans. I want to win at home for these fans. And so we've seen them show up. Now we're saying we want them to be a part of a winning culture. Mike Scott with the hit. Here's Fitz. Here with quarterback Jack Cohn. They brought pressure. The moment they did, what'd you see? Yeah, I mean, they bought cover zero, one more than we could block. We had a good play call called, uh, just a shallow route coming. Was able to put it on. He made a great play, break, uh, breaking a tackle. What would this win mean for you? I mean a lot. Just get our first win at home. I mean a ton, and uh, we just got to finish strong. Go get him. Thank you, Rip. Go. Cool. Fitz, thank you. And still alive. As San Antonio wins the final two, and Arlington drops the final two. That will put the promise via the tiebreaker into the XFL playoffs. Quint Dormany, but first, flag on the play. Dark clock Three. move on that. Yeah, what needs to go to 207. 207 on the clock, 207. yep. Neutral zone infraction, defense, prior to the snap, causing the offense to react to five-yard penalty. Please reset the game clock to two minutes, seven seconds, 207. Close left, close left, ace right, righty. Ace right, righty. David, David. What is What's that? Dormity pressured, felt it. Ball is out, but incomplete. Ben Davis was there to knock it free from Devin Darrington. Did you want to go no ball hole at nigga? Bunch. Motion Corvette bunch left motion Corvette. Ready? I was talking to Jim Herman, who you see on your screen, defensive coordinator for San Antonio before the game. He talked about adjusting to whatever they do. This is the time to adjust, stop them at a critical moment after an offensive score. Darren Tiff. That's going to be a first down. And Herman always looks like that. <laughs> he does. Well, he does. He, he, he doesn't care what level of football it is. He's coached at the highest levels. He's coached everywhere, okay, overseas. Give me plus Black Waco. Like, he just wants to coach. Chris plus Black Waco, 12S. Big shot, alert. F counter left. I want, ready? 
and knows about coaching great players. He said the only real impact he had with Charles Woodson, he helped discover him, but moved him to nickel. Sarah, Sarah. Got a Heisman Trophy That's year. Ended up with a lot of sacks that people forget about in that campaign. Dormity almost picked off. Sean Williams, the naval grab, almost got it, almost anchors away. Sean Williams could not have played that play any better outside of, of course, catching it. So he's dropping off in his zone. So what's, if there's no one in your zone, you turn, you find the quarterback, and you get depth. He gets depth underneath the receiver. All you have to do is finish it. The drop was perfect. It could not have been any better. Make the catch. He's frustrated. We're all frustrated. Quarterback, quarterback, but I think opportunities will come real, back real. to you if you keep on going. Sarah, Sarah, duck! Darren Tidd met quickly by Matthew Gotell. And you can just feel it. The Brahmas defense has belief. As the clock winds down to zero, it's money time. That means put up four fingers, it's time for the fourth quarter. And if you want to stay alive, this is when you've got to close it out. The most important quarter of football coming up for the San Antonio Brahmas. And the horns are up. The masks are on inside the Alamo Dome. Hi, Bob. Hi, Dad. Hi. XFL playoff starts Saturday, April 29th on ESPN2 with the South Division Championship. We know that's going to be in Houston. And Sunday, April 30th on ESPN, the North Division Championship. And we will crown an XFL champ on Saturday, May 13th on ABC, right here inside the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. Lord Galindo here with Sam Ancho, the path to the playoffs for the Brahmas. It's simple and complex. <laughs> what they've got to do, win the final two, including this one, Arlington must lose the final two. That would put the Brahmas in via the tiebreaker. Pressure, ball is out. A chase with the big bodies to get there. And it looks like Brett Boyko made one of the biggest plays of the season for the Guardians by chasing down that fumble. And you don't have to even guess who made that play. It was Delonte Delonte Scott. Delonte, you ain't got to guess. I told you. Delonte Scott sees Boyko's hands. He lifts them off of him and doesn't just get the sack. No, he goes and gets the ball. Why? Because that's a sack and a forced fumble. Those are the plays Delonte Scott's been making all season long. That's why he's top three in sacks in the XFL. His coach, Joy Porter, called him an avatar. He's six foot five inches tall. All he does is make plays. And this Orlando offense has stalled since Mac Brown's 69-yard fake ended up in the hands of KD Cannon. Momentum all on the side of San Antonio. Catch episode six of the XFL docuseries, Player 54, Chasing the XFL Dream. Available to stream on ESPN Plus. Directed by Peter Berg, this nine-part docuseries chronicles the creation of the XFL under new ownership and provides an all-access look at all eight teams. By the way, Delonte Scott has played in seven games. He's got seven and a half sacks. One of the absolute stars in this season of the XFL. Cone back to work with Jaquez Patrick. Cone to Patrick. Patrick's going to have a first down. Ball is out! Into the hands of Stansley Maponga. Game changer. Here we go, Sam. The oldest player on the Guardians roster. Papa Bear bringing it in. Papa Bear needs to work on his dance moves. But that was a great play by Stansley Maponga. You saw it. Jack Cohn saw nothing downfield. He takes the check down. Then you see Maponga, eyes aware, running to the ball. And sometimes, like as they say, the ball finds me. And it was forced out by Terrence Smith. And Orlando now has great field position. They got to make something out of it. What is What's that? Derek Tim with the dance. San Antonio was looking for the strip from behind. That was Drew Beasley. 
Mapong is such a great story. Told us before the start of the season the importance of his role. He said he didn't have anybody when his career started in the NFL to help him through all the adversity you naturally face. He's taken it upon himself to be that guiding force. He wants to mentor some of the younger players. He's the oldest guy yeah, on his no, team. Frank, he says, I didn't have tank, this when tank, I played. Tank. I'm going to be what I didn't have for everyone else. Maybe I can extend their careers here Sarah, Sarah, and in the NFL. Tank. Quentin Dermody, the local kid, will scramble. And Dormady goes down before he is hit by Jordan Williams. Dormady has his entire family here. His dad, Mike, was his head coach at Bernie High School, just north off I-10 in the San Antonio area. Pops is now an offensive coordinator at Waxahachie High School. Third and two. Darrington, first down, looking for more. Looking for the sideline, little cutback. Dormady trying to get in the mix, and he got shut down by Rico Jeffers. But Darrington having himself a game, the Hobbit man with 16 yards. That was a great run by Darrington, but no one had the running back. We saw Delonte Scott get up the field. If it's a pass, you can get up the field. On a running play, someone's got to go quarterback to cutback. Bunch right motion, scout right after action. Scout right, scout right, scout right. The quality of football, especially in the second hurry half up, of the up. season, Start. has been brilliant in the XFL. Wait, Every game is close. No favorite is safe. The Brahm is the favorite here, but the Guardians with just one win, fighting like their entire season is on the line. That's Andrew Jamil out of D2 Stonehill, where he had 3,600 yeah, yeah, receiving yards in his career. Easy, easy, easy. Fetch, fetch, fetch. Hey, ace right, ace right, ace right. Sarah, Sarah, touch. Dormady high and through the hands of Jalen Smith. Tejada in coverage. San Antonio with some shutdown DBs. We haven't called Luke Barku's name tonight, but Barku has been the best shutdown corner in the XFL. Wearing number one in black, his counterpart Terrell Bonds. In number two, Cameron Kelly you're the, uh, you're the drive, drive. has shallow, also been shallow. a force. I see him on the left side of the screen. Sorry. Third and six Fearful. for Quentin Dormady. He's Fearful. got time. Got Dropped. Fibble, 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 Fibble. Katie Cannon could not hold on. Cam Kelly. Maybe he heard the footsteps of Kelly. And we heard the call from Buckley. Field goal. That brings on the former Lou Groza Award winner. Started his career at FIU, finished at Miami. This is Jose Morgales for 52 yards. This would be his season long. Kick is up. And the kick is good from 52. Six straight makes for the former top kicker in all of college football. And we've got a two point game. Orlando turning the takeaway into three points. Welcome back to San Antonio. Sam, Jack Cohn had a lot to prove in this game. And he's been proving it. Not only his receivers, but also himself. His offensive line, receivers stepping up. Nick Holly stepping up. Everyone on this team has heard enough of the noise, and they understand how to play desperate. Desperation is what Heinz Ward was looking for, and he's getting a performance that's epitomizing that. San Antonio leaving everything out here. They picked it up after a slow start. 296, a season high for Cone. And that surpassing performance, it's going to be up there with the likes of McCarron, Silvers, Danucci as one of the best this year. Especially if you come out with a win. A win when it matters the most in your playoff game. 
After the Borgales field goal from 52, we've got a two-point game. San Antonio came into this favored by two. Fred Brown, does he have more return magic like he did from 94 yards a few weeks ago at Las Vegas? The answer there is not at the moment. Week 9 continues tomorrow afternoon at no noon Eastern with an ESPN doubleheader. Starts with the defenders hosting the Renegades, followed by a huge one between the Sea Dragons and Battle Hawks. Every game is also available on ESPN+. Plus. DC has sold out their home field. Real, St. Real. Louis, they always pack the dome. And Seattle will be eliminated. Omaha, Omaha, if they cannot take down the Battle Hawks. <laughs> Will we see A.J. McCarron back? Nick Tiano had his helicopter moment a week ago, but that team will go as A.J. McCarron takes them. They will, and Nick Tiano got injured in that game last week, and so likely it will be A.J. McCarron back. That's what we heard from Anthony Becht last week, unless something has changed in this critical game. Hoping to save McCarron. Right, we're good, we're good. Vegas, Get by Vegas. Vegas, which they did. Go. To have him Fight. in the most important Fight. game of the season for St. Louis. Patrick, just tough running. He has saved his best for last. Patrick coming off a 90-plus yard performance in the Dome last week against Houston. Looked so nimble with the footwork, and we saw that as he got into the end zone near the end of the first half. And one thing about this situation, third and short, you don't want to get too comfortable even though you have the lead. The clock is running, get your first down. Vegas, Vegas. And then if they say four minute drive, make this an eight minute drive. Fight, fight, fight. Cone tipped, almost picked. That was the gift the Guardians desperately needed. Hey, hey, Justin. Wow. There are almost three Let's different that. players that could have intercepted that ball. Cohn has played turnover free football. He had two interceptions on back to back throws to end the first half and open the second half. And the loss last week almost had one there. Brad Wing punting off to Justin Rogers. Wing, the biggest leg with Marquette King in the XFL. Rodgers, he's going the wrong direction. Now reverses field, but the Brahmas are all over it. Kima Silverman bringing him down. Horrible field position for Orlando. The San Antonio defense, number one in the league in scoring, trying to bow up in the final 835 and deliver the folks in the Alamo Dome the first home win for the San Antonio Brahmas. Welcome back to San Antonio. Fitz just caught up with Brahma's head coach, Hans Ward. Coach, coach, what'd you see? Uh, we saw some potential flags, but you know, the thing is, we just want consistency. That's all. I, I think everybody in the league just wants consistency. So for us, man, we just still got to fight. We're still in this game. We're not going to worry about the rest. Thanks. Could not challenge what he thought was illegal contact on his receiver, Landon Akers, on the last offensive play because he used his challenge at the beginning of the game. Guardians backed up Darrington, trying to fix that with a flag back at the three-yard line. Down. Holding offense, number 64. The penalty is half the distance to go from the previous spot. Repeat first down. That's against Fred Loina. And all the way back for Orlando. Talk about finishing. We heard her, their head coach Terrell Buckley say it at halftime. Haven't seen it this season. Will they finish at this moment? Dormady complete to the 10. Logan Carter, former Oklahoma State Cowboy, 
native Texan with the catch. Let's check in with Chris. Well, the Guardians getting very thin at running back. Dedrick Thomas is out. He's got a splint on his right hand and wrist. Mind you also that Jermaine Martin also did not make the trip. That leaves Devin Darrington as right now their only running back. Thomas also one of their key returners as well. Chris, thanks for the update. Becker! Becker! 180! What's up? Working through the noise. He got hit above the net. Was looking for Jordan Thomas. And this is going to be a call against San Antonio. What are the results? Incomplete. Incomplete, Incomplete pass. pass. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 45. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. And that's Delonte Scott. A little too aggressive with a hit on Dormady. And that's a call where you talk about, man, should it be challenged? Delonte Scott avoids the, the cut block. Yeah, maybe that, 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 that second act is what Dean Blandino usually talks about instead of pulling him down. And that not only moves the chains, but gets Orlando out of the noisy end zone for the Brahma's fans. Down by two. Plenty of time left. Picked off! Beasley! Doing it himself! Say hello to your new best friends! Mo, you said it last week. The last win that we saw San Antonio get, they scored on defense. It was against Arlington in their second game against Arlington. Now we see not only a turnover, but a score on D. If your offense isn't getting it done, which they are today, get your defense involved. Jim Herman said, hey, we want two. I want a turnover in the first half, one in the second half. Didn't get the first one. Now you got the second one and trying to put this game out of reach. Man that began his career as a walk-on at Michigan State has made himself a fixture of this defense coordinated by Jim Herman, full of playmakers. And this is why you save the challenge late. Let's listen in. Yep. And what I had, I saw the restriction. I looked back, and the ball was in the air. Okay. So what I have, may have already been tipped at that yeah. point too. I've got a legal jam. I'm going to go sky cam. Okay, what I'm looking for is a grab here. What I see is the defender legally jamming him within five. I don't see a grab. The ball is out. So at that point, we can't have holding. Yeah, that's where I'm going to. My all 22 next. Again, legal jam within five. I don't see a grab. Any grab takes place after the ball is in the air, so no flag, no foul. All right, Jason, after review, there's no there's no flag for defensive holding. I've got a legal jam within five. Any grab occurs after the ball was already in the air, so there's no foul for defensive holding. Result stands as a touchdown. Result stands as a touchdown. Orlando's charged a timeout, and they can't challenge rest of the game. Understood. Thank you. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Orlando's charged a timeout and loses their challenge for the game. Touchdown. The over hits for just the second time in a game involving the Brahmins. Effort is everything. Drew Beasley on that play, he went on those inside moves. Well, he tried an inside move again. It wasn't effective, so he got out of it, got the pick, and then he scored. Eight-point game. Real. And I yeah. love the decision to go for two. You get Where'd a 10-point game, now all of a sudden it's a two-score game. A touchdown in the third quarter doesn't cut it. The max you can get in the possession is nine points. Here's a penalty flag. 74. 74. False start, gotcha. False, False start. False start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. Remains a try for two. So this is what we were talking about earlier. Even though this moves San Antonio back to where a three-point conversion would be attempted from, hey. since they initially declared two, 
This is still a two-point attempt from the 10. And I, I don't Go mind this pass. call at all. Why? Because it's already an eight-point game, and so if Orlando scores, they need a three-pointer in order to win, a two-pointer to tie. And so Go for it, put the game out of reach, or at least make it a two-score game, even though you're doing it with this penalty from the 10-yard line. And a timeout. Let's check in with Fitz. Drew, if you can compare anything in your life to a pick six touchdown for a D lineman, fire away. Oh, man. I mean, there are, there are countless memories I could think of, but you know, <laughs> that memory, first touchdown, I've scored in a long, long time, maybe since middle school. <laughs> you know, being able to jump in the crowd, you know, I envisioned myself, you know, making a play like that and jumping into the stands. It was awesome. He's lost several home games here by two, by three, and again by two. What would this one mean if you can hold on? Well, I mean, if the fans deserve a win, you know, for the first, be the first win out here in the Alamo Dome. You know, these are a special group of people here in San Antonio, and, you know, they deserve nothing but the best. You give credit to a, a coach on the other sideline named Mark Snyder, who happened to be your D-line coach at Michigan State. Yeah, I love Coach Snyder. Uh, you know, he taught me a lot, you know, at Michigan yes, State. Yes, you know, yes, taught yes, me yes. about toughness and, you know, what it takes to play defense. And, you know, I, you know, I, miss, I miss him a lot, and, uh, you know, it was awesome to be able to play against. So. Great score. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Well, and Fitz, he had some ups there, too. False, False start. start. Offense, number 62. Five-yard penalty. Remains a try for two. Now, San Antonio is just making this more difficult on themselves. And he talks about the last time he may have scored was in, in middle school. People don't understand how hard it is for a defensive lineman to score on defense. I get it. DBs and pick sixes and safeties. But well, you're, you're a DN. You're an outside 67. linebacker. It's not the easiest thing in the world. And that was all him. That Tipped all, it to man. himself. Hurry up. Made the catch. Made the sprint into the end zone. Stuck the I'll landing I'll in the seats here in the Alamo Dome. BB picked off. Guardians will try to turn this into two for themselves. Will not. But what this does is it keeps it a one possession game with 707 left. And Orlando can still win the game at this point. Who knows what they're going to try to do. But the way they've been playing these last few weeks, you get a score. Maybe you go for three to try and win. Or maybe you go for two for the tie. Well, what they had an opportunity to do last week, down by three after a late touchdown, they elected to go for a one-point conversion instead of a three-point conversion to tie the game. They were banking on getting the ball back. They got the ball back. However, it was a dormity fumble late, and that erased their chances of sending this game to overtime. Well, to your point, Lowell, Orlando hasn't got a three-pointer all season long. They've not scored on a three-point conversion. So in that scenario, they said, let's go for one and let's stop them on defense. They did, they got the ball back, had an opportunity to go down and score and a late fumble with about 50 seconds left and two timeouts is what cost them that game. And so they were 10 yards out of field goal range. Hopefully they'll make a better decision this week. Eli Rogers with the return. Rogers north of the 25. Let's get wired with the promise. Heinz Ward, absolutely loving it. San Antonio is in the playoffs that they won the final two games, and Arlington loses the final two. That's the only path there, and they would be there via the tiebreaker. How is that complete to Charleston Rambo? DeAndre Francois was flirting with an interception, a dangerous one of that. The better on one too many dates, you flirt that much, man. That ball was tipped by Devin Darrington. He was the intended receiver, and then the ball falls into the lap of Rambo. Could have been intercepted. You can't afford plays like that at times like this. I don't know if that was to Darrington. He put his hands up like, my bad for getting in the way. Second and one. Guardians have been eliminated. They're fighting for a strong finish here. Three on the play clock. Francois in the tight coverage. Broken up by a pass intended for Charleston Rambo. And that is Sean Williams who is slowed. 
former captain from Navy. Being checked out. This is San Antonio defense that is already thin. They lost their leader on the back end, Jack Kerner, to an MCL injury after an interception last week. Ryan Lewis, standout DB, lost with a hammy injury. Sean Williams also fulfilling his naval service while playing in the XFL in the city of San Antonio. He got a soft spot in their heart for players from the Naval Academy as this is the house that David Robinson built. Let's throw down the fits. I reached out to Ken Matalola, former legendary Navy head coach, about Sean Williams, and he summed him up as an unbelievable person off the field. Guys gravitated to him. That's why he was a captain. Also a fearless, fierce football player. You talk to anybody at Navy about Sean Williams, Scott Strassmeyer, their longtime SID, they, they sing the same, all say the same thing. One former teammate. Hold on, Lowell. Go ahead with this. Yeah, this is Derek Tint in the open field. I carry you to bring him down. Adelusi will try inside the five. Devin Derrington. That's Harvard speed right there, Sam. Well, we're seeing the same thing over and over again. It's third down. You're re rushing up the field, but Drew Be Beasley, in this case, you have to see the offensive tackle as a square stance. He's not pass blocking. He's run blocking. And so you have to go quarterback to cutback. Your job is to keep that cabal from cutting back. And that's the second time we've seen San Antonio give up a big play on third down, thinking it's pass. 59 yards for Darrington. Trying to stay up. One-handed tackle there by Delonte Scott. Saint over yet as we head to the final five minutes of a game that means far more for the San Antonio Brahmas than it does for the Orlando Guardians. That is when it comes to the playoff picture. But every player on the field is looking to put together positive film to get a shot in the NFL. Darrington just put together a highlight. Back to Darrington. Dropped immediately. Rico Jeffers, welcome back. Returning to the Brahma's defense after missing time on the IR with an ankle injury. Former Texas Tech Red Raider. Eight point game. San Antonio favored by two. And a timeout by Orlando. So the threat, at least in this point, of having De DeAndre Francois in the game from a defender standpoint is that you know he can run the ball. He's an athletic quarterback. He can throw and run. And so big plays like we saw before are available, but also in the red zone. Zone reads are available, but DeAndre Francois has experience in, in winning with his arm as well. And so dual threat quarterback, this is when his legs can be an extreme factor in the red zone. Also, Quentin Dormady, you got to acknowledge it. He struggled with turnovers over the past two games. That's now six for him since the start of the last game against Arlington. Francois, two of four, more of a running threat. Darrington after that breakout run to his right. Francois trying to get the Guardians in the end zone. Pressure. Scott hits him, but complete the score. Andrew, Jamil, just like they do it at D2, Stonehill. And Francois took a shot by Delonte Scott. Sam, that's the epitome of toughness right there. Well, DeAndre Francois has been through a lot in his life and his career. He was, he was an eighth grader, and he was one of the best middle schoolers in all the nation. Then he goes and goes to IMG Academy, and he has success there. He goes to all the places he went to. Florida State, we talked about it. But this hit, this toughness, 
We hope he's okay, but the fact that he stood in there gives his team a chance to win. What will be the call here? Did Orlando and Terrell Buckley learn their lesson from a week ago, even though the one-point conversion has by far been the most successful for the Guardians? Two, ties the game. Three, gives them a lead. Now, if they don't get this, another decision is coming up. Do they want the fourth and 15? Make it, keep it. Well, let's live in the moment. Cut. Dormady now at quarterback. White 80! White side! Pressure. Way overthrown to Jordan Thomas. Two point promise lead, just like Vegas thought it would be. Obvious miscommunication between quarterback and receiver. You see it in the arms, see the frustration by Jordan Thomas. He knew he was open on the slant, he'd have been open on the fade. That's the frustrating part about this team. Man, I'm big, big body, slant, it's wide open. But the quarterback receiver don't get on the same page and that's where you see this frustration come about. Now, we saw this last week, San Antonio, excuse me, Orlando didn't convert late in the game. They got a defensive stop, then they got the ball back and they had a chance to go and win on a last second field goal before they fumbled the ball away. And so, this, you've been here before, but will you, like Coach Buckley said at halftime, finish. Here's what concerns me. Orlando has one timeout, and this is a San Antonio offense that takes pride in the ground and pound. It's going to be tick, 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 even with the clock situation in the final two minutes being more like college. Borregales will kick it away, and you're absolutely right. Last week against Arlington, they got the ball back. The issue was what happened after they got it back. A turnover. Fred Brown is back deep. After the catch, respective teams leaving the 30 and 35. Brown, sideline. Brown, great field position. Hit hard at the 40. San Antonio's looking for a flag and ain't there. 35-yard return. Here's Chris Button. Well, Francois, after taking that huge hit, they were looking at his left ribs. He's going up high five and everyone saying he's good to go. He'll go in if they get the ball back. Sam, that is standing tall in the face of pressure in yeah, so many ways. And the fact that he could even go in if they get the ball back means a lot, too. That dual threat means everything ball. for this team. Now it's time Vegas. for San Antonio Where to play go? keep away. We go. But on a night in which the offense is clicked with big plays, Maybe they're going for the dagger. Patrick wants the jugular. Just shy of the 40, 19 yards. Jacques Patrick has been the story, not just of this game, but of the latter half of the season for San Antonio. He sees the vision that ball's supposed to go inside. He sees there's no edge, no defense, no edge, no chance. He bounces to the outside, and then he gets extra hey, same yardage. Good same good Oscar on Vegas, ready. Get a bruised and battered San Antonio offensive line. Vegas. Fine. Three more minutes Let's of go. excellence to close this one out. No surprise. Back to Patrick. Patrick, ping pong. Two more yards. And here's the frustrating part if you're a defense. It's the same play. You're chasing off the back edge. It should be either a tackle for loss or maybe just a no game, but his big body, 6'3", 242. He falls forward for a few yards, puts you in a favorable, favorable position. Next up, Arlington and D.C. on Sunday. D.C. with a win. They have home field under, in the north. I'm under, I'm under. Arlington I the snap, with a win. They're in the playoffs. Oh, Seattle, St. Louis, the later oh, game. Battle Hawks in with a win there. Omaha, Omaha, go! Brahmas need two straight, combined with two straight losses for Arlington. All of the Guardians are there. That's going to set up a pivotal third down as we're getting close to the two-minute warning. Now we can go down to the two-minute warning unless Orlando wants to use a timeout here. And they will elect to take this all the way down to the final two minutes. Sam, you wouldn't know it. Two teams with a combined three wins. This feels like a playoff game. It absolutely is a playoff game. For San Antonio, if they win, they stay alive. For Orlando, they're playing for everything. Pride, 
themselves, their team, their city, their community. They want it all. Welcome back inside the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. Lowe Galindo here with Sam Acho, Ian Fitzsimmons, and Chris Budden. In a few weeks, we'll play the XFL championship game here. If San Antonio and Hines Ward want any shot of being in that game, they have to finish here in the final two minutes. That is the first absolute, the first domino that must fall in a season on Vegas, in which those dominoes have fallen Where's the, line? the wrong direction for Heinz Ward. Can they deliver the first home win of the year? We go. These passionate San Antonio fans. Third and six. My son. Cohen, his best game continues to Acres. That will be a first down. Clutch throw, and now with under two minutes left, one timeout for Terrell Buckley. That was the stop that the Guardians needed. Hey, let's go, bad frog, bad frog, let's go. Right, let's go. Sam, hey, you're gonna push the clock? Jack Cohn is looking like a dude. Hey, we're good, we're good, we're good. And it's not only Jack Cohn, it's all the guys who have stepped up around him. Now, obviously, this involves line to gain, so Dean Blandino can review it. He has, he's seen it was a correct call. Hey, we got time. No more hey, timeouts. Time. Time. This game is hey, very close to being over. Now, tick, tick, tick. We got time, we got time. Orlando can stop the clock only once. Yeah, here we go. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Omaha, Omaha, we go. Back to Patrick. Weaving. And this should be that timeout for Orlando. Sam, I just go back, even though it's still relatively early for that fourth and 15 opportunity, it's there for a reason. It's built so you have a shot to get the football back. Why not take advantage of it? Because last week you were in this position and you didn't take advantage of it and it worked out very, very close to being in your favor to the point that you were the one who beat yourself. You didn't get beat, you beat yourself, you fumbled the ball away. And so in this position, you're thinking, okay, if I get a stop like I did last week, I'll have an opportunity. It didn't work in your favor. 3.55 was left on the clock when San Antonio got the ball back. Now, if you're down by two and you trust your defense anyways, go for the fourth and 15 and hold even if you don't get the ball back force a field goal and you still got time but that's too big of a field position switch that fourth and 15 is from the 25 yard line your own 25 yard line so if you don't get it that's a guaranteed field goal maybe a touchdown so i don't disagree with the with the decision but now the position has been changed the fact remains you needed the ball back to have a shot to win the game and you may watch the final 127 tick away without finding the football again patrick We'll try to put the finishing touches on it, but man, this Orlando defense, they are hidden even in the final moments of this game. Orlando has not won on the road. San Antonio has not won at home. And that's an injured guardian, Gerald Willis, down in pain. Frustrating season for Terrell Buckley. His team started hot in this game. Opening drive, capped by a touchdown and two-point conversion. Jordan Thomas from Quentin Dormady. Playing without the XFL's leading receiver in Cody Latimer. Got the week off, having some knee issues. And they've been so close, so painfully close in so many games. But so has Heinz Ward and the San Antonio Brahmas but they're finding a way to stay alive. Is it too little, yeah. too late when it comes yeah. to the XFL race? Hey. And so what's that call there? You're saying think? What are we looking at here? Yeah, so I'm not sure what happened before for him to talk about think, but I think it has to do with... There you heard him say it should be over with. That's our time. 10 second runoff, what's gonna happen with this injury? And so he's saying, let's find a way to get this first down, be smart, 10-second runoff, and let's end this game. Let's not give it back 
to Orlando. The teams that have had the most success are the teams that take advantage of what make the league unique. The fourth and 15, the fact that you have one, two, or three point conversions, that hasn't been the case for Orlando, taking advantage of the intricate nature of this XFL. Dean, we... You heard, you heard Coach Ward say 10 seconds, 10 seconds, especially a 10 second runoff. Why didn't we see it there? By rule, we don't have a 10 second runoff against the defense. What happens there is the play clock goes to 35 and the, then the game clock starts on the ready for play. So that in essence becomes almost like a 10 second runoff because they're not gaining an advantage. Patrick is bottled up and he is brought down by Savion Patton. And this will end the game. And San Antonio for the first time. They win in front of their home fans inside the Alamo Dome. But most importantly, they are still alive in the XFL South race. They need to win the regular season finale against DC. And they need to hope that DC beats their competition, the Arlington Renegades, tomorrow. And that Arlington loses again. <laughs> Yeah, that had the feel of a big time game, Sam, with importance on both sides. Well, it felt like a playoff game, and that's exactly what it was. San Antonio wins, they continue. Arlington plays DC tomorrow. If they lose, San Antonio's still alive. Next week, Arlington plays Houston, who's the XFL South leader. If they lose, and San Antonio beats DC week 10, all of a sudden, San Antonio has found their way into the playoffs. And San Antonio found their offense, 390 total yards, 302 for Cone through the air. Here's Fitz with Hans Ward. We just mentioned Jack Cone's stats, over 300 yards, Coach. You told us before the game that was the one dude you wanted to see step up. He yeah. did. What'd you see from your quarterback? Man, just poised, composed, went out there and executed. Uh, Man, I'm, I'm happy to have them, man. I'm just so happy for our fans of San Antonio. It's a big win for us, so uh, it's a big, uh, we won this one for the fans. You've won a lot of games in your career. Yeah. How's this one feel? <laughs> it feels good, man. We're still in the fight, you know. Uh, that was our whole goal going into it. We want to try to get into the playoffs, so we'll see what D.C. and Arlington does. But, I mean, every time we played here in San Antonio, man, it's been a close game. We lost by three. We lost by two. We lost by two last week. So to pull it out uh, for our fans, our fans stuck with us the whole time, man. I'm so grateful, so thankful uh, because uh, they brought the energy today. We're thankful for that. How's it going to be watching those games tomorrow for you? <laughs> I got my popcorn, man. I'm being glued <laughs> to the television. Go get him, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. Over to KB. Cohen, your best game of the season, over 300 yards. What was the difference for you today? Yeah, I think it was just the guys around me. They did a phenomenal job all day. All line protected so great. Receivers are open. Tight ends are great. Running backs ran the ball well. So, really just all my teammates. Backs against the wall in terms of the postseason. You've played so many close games here at home and overtime loss yesterday. What was the conversation on the sidelines when you got down today in terms of trying to keep this season alive? Yeah, I mean, we've been through a lot this season. We've been through a lot of adverse adversity. Uh, we have a resilient group and just stay in the fight. That's been the motto the whole, whole season long. And that's what we did, and it was good to get a win in, our, in front of our home crowd. Your coach, Heinz Ward, said that he was hoping and expecting this kind of performance from you today. What was the conversation like with him before the game? Yeah, I mean, he just said, just keep fighting, just find completions, and just do your job. I mean, that's all quarterbacking is. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate him, you know, believing in me. I appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you. So we're seeing with Jack Cohn and the San Antonio team, they've stayed alive in this race. They have another chance to get a home win next week against D.C., the best team record-wise in the nation. We'll see how it fares. But for now, they'll be watching tomorrow with their popcorn. Sam, this is what it's about. We've got six games left in the XFL regular season, two playoff spots remaining in the North. It's St. Louis and Seattle. And here in the South, it's Arlington. And yes, the San Antonio Brahmas, after they win a must-win game against Orlando. For Sam and our entire crew, I'm Logan Lindo. Now let's kick it over to SportsCenter.